Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy, and we're two Tenderfoot Tourists. Welcome to episode 95, the one about one and only in Texas. Well, it's been a while since we've done one of our weird or bizarre episodes. And since we just returned from Texas uh, about a month ago, Mm -hmm. we thought, why not find out what's weird in Texas? Sounds like a great idea. And, you know, you might be surprised to find out there's actually a lot weird in Texas, just like there is in Missouri and all the other places. Colorado and Wisconsin. and It's a never-ending list, it, folks. It, it there's just, a lot of weird out there. They're everywhere. And and just in case you haven't listened to any of those before, um, they aren't insulting. It's just unusual stuff. And some of the stuff we would really go to. Mm-hmm. So we tell you about it just to give you ideas of places that are strange and unusual destinations instead of being the norm yeah we don't like the norm do we the norm is too normal i i reject the norm and go towards the unusual it's kind of what our kids are like that is so true (laughs) oh my gosh that is so true so we we uh now out of a list i mean a plethora i think i've used that word here before right plethora Mm. (laughs) she's making that face like that was painful you use words that you don't always know what they mean. But yeah, no, you don't I always do, know what I they do mean. too. <laughs> Why would I use them if I didn't know what they are? Anyway, a lot, insurmountable, a countless amount. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Anyway, you should of, insert a pause there. Okay, there you go. <laughs> But a list, a laundry list of, I mean, it was a mile long of different things and uh, to see in Texas alone that are weird, bizarre, unusual. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, just, just you won't find them anywhere else. Right. And How, we're not going to talk about a ton of them because it's too hard to get enough information to everyone. No, we especially, I mean, we're not going to make an episode that lists off all of the stone hinges that are in Texas. Oh, we've talked about just the stone hinges. We just listed one time mm-hmm. that there were stone hinges all over the place. Nearly in every state. There's a lot of stone hinges. Yeah. But we're focusing on, we've ended up picking three that we thought that were very entertaining uh, and unusual. What's the name of this episode? The one about one and onlys in Texas. Yeah, one and onlys. So, uh, we're hoping that what we bring you today will encourage you or maybe inspire you to go look for your own strange or bizarre to go visit uh, and, you know, share them with other people. So with that being said, where do we want to start? Uh, I'm thinking starting with the Orange Show Monument uh, yeah. might be really interesting. Yes. Oh, well, tell us about that place. Um, it. <laughs> okay. So it. it <laughs> you don't say. Well, that was enough. Let's move on. <laughs> It's a folk art environment, a monumental work of handmade architecture Mm -hmm. located in Houston's East End. Yes, I am reading. Mm -hmm. It was built single-handedly from 1956 until its completion in 1979 by the late Jefferson Davis McKissick. Now, he used to be a postal worker. Right. And I guess there's like... um, It's it's outdoor and there's like 3,000 square feet environment. Okay. Um, It's like a maze. In design, and it includes, they say, an oasis, a wishing well, a pond, a stage, a museum, a gift shop, and several upper decks. It is constructed of concrete, brick, steel, and and found objects, including gears, tiles, wagon wheels, mannequins, tractor seats, and statuettes. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, and I guess um, the original builder of it, he hand-painted every piece. Everything that I've found about what makes this place so fascinating is, one, the reason why he built it is because of his love of oranges. That was one. Right. And then second of all, he wanted to encourage and educate people about the, the benefits of having oranges in your life. Well, and that he wanted to reinforce the belief that nutrition and hard work are the best things for you in life. Right. Exactly. That's, that's how you um, – that that's his answer to um, longevity in life. Right. Yeah. And and the other thing is what makes this place fascinating is he had 
integrated so many different types and forms of of a building. Like it, he had to know how to do metalwork and uh, welding. Mm-hmm. He had to do masonry. He had to do uh, excavation and uh, was it landscaping and yep. uh, the list goes on about about how many different types of styles of of, of building that he had to learn and he does. He just built this monstrosity, basically, a park monstrosity, if you will. Um, People love the place, by the way. And isn't it open from, like, June to September? But it's open limited days, actually, also. Yeah, Wednesday through Sundays only. Right. And, I mean, honestly, if it were nearby, like the distance we are from Silver Dollar City or something, I would probably say, let's jump in the car and go. It'd be fascinating. Admission's not really that much. It's only $5. Uh, kids under 12 are free to get in. Group tours of field trips, concerts, and some workshops have other fees that you have to go online and find out if you want to take a, a band of cl- a class full of people to go there. To me, this sounds like a place that we wouldn't necessarily travel from Missouri to Texas for, Mm-mm. but it would be a great road trip visit. Well, so if you live there or if you're going to be in Texas for something else and mm-hmm. you just happen to be able to swing by, it might be really cool to go look at it. Well, I, I know that uh, – where where is this located? In what city? Houston, right. Yes. Okay, so we're going to Galveston to jump on a cruise ship. This would be an interesting place to say, you know what, we got a few minutes you know, or a day to kill or something. Let's go look at something. This would be uh, – how would you describe this place? They like to refer to it as a uh, a folk art environment or folk art museum or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they actually um, – what was this comment that was made back here? I want to find it because – Monument. Yeah, and they say it's one of the most important ones in the country. I've mm. never heard of it. I've never heard of it either. It's just – it's eccentric. That's the word? Yes, it's eccentric. That's the word. And you and I like the weird. We've mentioned this before. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it would definitely be a fun day to spend to go check out that the Orange Show. It just It's a weird name even. Right. Um, I thought it was going to be like some big production or something, but it's it's a building. Right. And exactly. a maze. And- it, um, it's really easy to find. You go to uh, www. Do we still say www? No. Do you really have to say WW? I don't no. think so. I think everybody goes go to orangeshow.org, right? And you can find all the information. In fact, some of the things that we shared with you just in this part is based upon what we found here. For me, some of the photos make me think of a old time carnival. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there weren't a bunch of rides and stuff. That's not what I mean. It's just kind of the appearance of an old time carnival that's been set up. It's kind of interesting. I think it'd be pretty fascinating. Now, shortly after, supposedly shortly after uh, he had completed everything, he passed away. Uh, Jeff Misk- McKissick. McKissick? Uh-huh. Ah, I got that wrong. You know, the word kiss is right in the middle of it. Yes. Uh, actually, on, on <laughs> working in isolation from 1956 until his death in 1980. Wow. Um, McKissick. McKissick? used common building materials and found objects, brick, tiles, fencing from farm implements to transform the east end lot into an architectural maze of walkways, balconies, arenas, exhibits decorated with a mosaic and brightly painted iron figures. So let's That's move on. That's really cool. Now, see, I, I just think about, okay, it says there's mannequins involved. I just want to know how he's using them. Because that could be so weird. Well, you know what? You can go onto YouTube and find videos of where people have actually toured the place. So, oh, cool, 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 cool. So, cool, cool. anybody who's kind of like the House on the Rock, kind of like a House on the Rock. Yeah, the House on the Rock was weird. That was weird. <laughs> so, which one do you want to tackle next? Now, that one was just outside of Houston. Well, that is Houston. I'm sorry, that is Houston. Is where you find the yes, sir. Yes, the sir. Orange show. Yes, sir. Well, there's also the Munster Mansion, <laughs> the Munster Mansion in Waxahachie. Yeah, that's actually actually south. I believe it's south of uh, of Dallas. Ah, well, I just want you to say Waxahachie three times. Waxahachie, Waxahachie, Waxa, 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 Waxa. waxa, waxa. <laughs> So waxa waxy. <laughs> waxa hatchy. Waxa hatchy. It's hard to say, though. So it's not a weird name. We have weird speech. That is true. So, the, okay, the Munster's Mansion. Now, it's not the original. No, maybe we should start with, like, does anybody out there even know who the Munsters are? That's, That's true. That's the good question. That's true. 
I will be very surprised if they don't at least know who they are. But um, what year? I mean, what decade? <laughs> oh, well, okay. The Munsters was an old sitcom, ran for about three seasons, and it ran between 1964 through 66. And it had uh, uh, a family that um, – well, let me look up the, the description of the show here. A family of friendly monsters have misadventures, not quite understanding why people react to them so strangely. Well, the dad is Frankenstein. Right. The the wife is a vampire. Let me see their child. Their son, Eddie, is a werewolf. Yeah. And then their weird and out we, – I mean just strange outlandish daughter who looks like Marilyn Monroe. No, it's not daughter. Yeah, it's her daughter. Oh, well, then I'm totally confused. Because her last name's Munster. Yeah, but she's related. She's like cousin or um, niece or something. No. I'm looking it up. No, 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 no. Okay, look it up. I'll tell you what. I'll just I'll just read to them what the website says about this Munster. Now, what Yeah, in, keep talking. In 2002, a husband and wife team, Sandra and Charles McKee, decided that they were going to study the show scene for scene, shot for shot. Everything that had to do with the home and then rebuild it in Waxahachie, Texas. And they actually live in this home. They actually live in this home and they only give like tours like once or twice a year. And you, it's only by invitation only that you do that. You have to submit uh, an application to, to actually come and view and get a tour of the place. And uh, the, the place looks amazing. Um, if you ever watch the show, I mean, literally, uh, you walk in through the front door. Oh, no, you're not right, are you? Neener, neener, neener. Okay. It says right here, in the original series, she is the daughter of Lily Monster's sister. With her, uh, with Herman alluding to her plain looks coming from Lily's side of the face. That's right. Boom. I do. Man, you know the show better than I do, apparently. But, okay, so what was the name of their dog that lived under the steps? I, or, I, I put dog Spot. as in, yeah, their little, little air, air quotes. I say their dog. Spot. Their yes, it's Spot. I loved that show. Yeah. Remember when we met, I loved the monsters, and I had never watched what? I don't know. Oh, Adam's Family? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so Adam's you introduced fun. me to Adam's family, but for me it was the Munsters all the way. I love the Munsters though. But anyway, they literally they even have spot under the stairs. You walk in through the front door, and then this this the stairs yep. are up, raised just like the TV show, and you see a dragon in there. Did you mention Grandpa? Oh, I haven't mentioned Grandpa yet. Yeah, Grandpa also lives there. Yeah, he does. He lives he, in the basement. And he is also a vampire. He is also – Grandpa is the vampire. Uh, Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis, which is Grandpa – Yana Del Carlo is uh, Lily, uh, the the wife, the the mom in the show, and it was it was an awesome show. It was a lot of fun. I used to love to watch um, uh, Herman, the mm-hmm. dad. I used to love to watch him laugh when he thought he was funny. Fred Gwynn was an awesome actor. Oh, yeah. I really liked him. Fact- he did. He didn't like. He did not like playing. Um, from what I've been told, he did not like playing that character very much because it was very uncomfortable. Oh, well, it's a lot of makeup. It is a lot of makeup. It took a lot of time in the chair to get himself made up. And heavy and then, clothes. And the clothes were just like excruciating, especially the boots he had to wear. Um, but anyway, this place is just absolutely amazing. They yeah, even let's have, talk about the mansion a little bit here. Yeah, the – these people actually live in this home, and if you take a tour of it, I mean, you got the cobwebs and the macabreness. They actually have some on-screen used uh, memorabilia and stuff like that from, that was from from the actual show. Inside I think they have the building. some different outfits and everything hanging in there. They do. They mm-hmm. have uh, like Lily's a uh, couple sure. of her dresses, her dresses and yeah. stuff like that. Um, they have some wax figures of uh, Herman Munster, which is the dad of Frankenstein. They also have one of her, Lily. They have one of uh, Grandpa and also uh, Eddie. Eddie. There you go. You know what's so sad? The, is that name that was really common back in the 50s and 60s, Eddie? You don't really hear a lot of people by the name of Eddie nowadays that are like our age or younger. Mm-hmm. And every time I hear Eddie, you know the, the the last name I always want to put on the end of that. I don't know. It's a t- different show completely. I say Eddie. Haskell. Thank you. <laughs> every time. I keep wanting to, have to stop myself. Eddie ha- No. Eddie Munster. Um, but well, my, my uncle's name was Eddie, and my dad's middle name is Edward. 
There you but, go. But which, a, of course, my uncle's name was Edward, and they called him Eddie. But, I mean, it's like they quit at that generation. They didn't name him. Remember when we had our kids? Remember what my dad said? Do not name them after me. Yeah. He didn't like his name. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it you know, it's one of those things. It is one of those um, things. At this point, I think I would I would think I would put Edward as a middle name. I think it's cool. No, yeah. Not bad. Poor dad. Edward is not a bad name. No, it's kind of cool. It is. Um, okay, so, yeah, this place is kind of fascinating. I actually did a, did a tour through the, the place on YouTube. Someone had literally had the opportunity to walk through it. And the place, I mean, it looks like the, you know, remember the old TV show where the walls had like the plaster was broken away. You can right, see the slats right. under it. They did that too. Um, cobwebs, did I mention that one? Old, oh, yeah. Old telephones and stuff like that of that day and age, you know, in the 1930s, actually, 1930s telephone. I mean, it's just... Basically, it's like they live in a permanent haunted house. They really do. And uh, from the outside, it's actually very... It's got that Victorian style sort of feel to it, so... So um, you mentioned touring. I think it's important that we point out you can't just show up there. Oh, yeah. Tell them about that. Um, They do an event once a year, I think they said on here. And then otherwise you're supposed to call and set up your tours. And it's for a lot of reasons, one of which is they live there. Yeah. So they don't want you just dropping in. But also because of the fact they live on a really busy, busy road. And you can't just park anywhere. <laughs> so they need to know you're coming because they don't want you walking across the road to get up there and things like that. Exactly. By the way, uh, y- Yvonne Del Carlo. She was a very pretty woman. She was, she was, you know, the mother of the, the oh, woman Lily. played Lily. Mm-hmm. You remember what other movie she played in? No. McClintock with John Wayne. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Now. I was just like, huh? But, oh, yeah, she played the mom of the young man. Mm-hmm. That, uh, I'm not the young. Yes, of the young man that fell in love with McClintock's daughter. Who was played by I don't the know. daughter, Stephanie Powers. You know too much movie crap. <laughs> I'm telling you, your brain, if we could just take out some of that useless information. I agree. Did you know she was also in the Ten Commandments? Which one? Uh, which Ten Commandments? No, the original? Which, no, which woman? You talked about Oh, two. I'm sorry. Uh, Yvonne. Very cool. I, I probably would recognize her. Which was she? Oh, was she Sephora? <gasps> I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it was. Maybe with lighter hair. but Maybe Miriam. Could be. We need to look that up. Yeah. Not, I mean, not for the show. Nobody cares. But <laughs> we're just babbling. So Fred Gwynn, he is, uh, he, he went on to do like Car 54. He also went in My Cousin Vinny. Uh, he played the judge there. He played in, uh, The Pet Cemetery. Uh, I mean, he played in a lot of different TV shows and movies. We're going down rabbit trails again. Yeah. How about we talk more about the building? Oh, yeah, let's talk about the building. Um, it's really cool. I mean, you can go, first of all, you can go online to their website. And what is their website, Steve? Munstersmansion.com. Munstermansion.com. Cool, cool, cool. Well, if you're on there, you actually have a spot where you can hit gallery. And it will show you pictures of the different rooms and then past attractions. And it's really neat on the different rooms because you can have, there's several photos of the dining room area, then the living room, mm-hmm. Eddie's room, Grandpa's room. In Lily's room. It, it's really cool. Uh, I, I'm just like totally thrown by it because like grandpa's room, you see his um, coat and everything on a mannequin. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming it's a mannequin and not a wax figure. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I assumed but it was a wax figure. It, it's so cool. Isn't that kind you, of funny? You can't just, if you ever watch the show, you would love it. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So did you look at events? He always had a cigar in his hand. Yeah. Did you ever look at the events on the web page? I don't know if I did or not. So back in 2016, October 2016, I'm going to assume that they have an open house every October. I'm going to assume that's it. You might want to look it up yourself, I, everyone. I, say, I looked on their calendar, and they didn't have anything listed right they now. They didn't have – but they had a, an event – Back in 2016, which I found like, wow, that's incredible, between 7 p.m. and midnight. And it was a it was a benefit for the Ellis County Children's Advocacy Center. And they quite literally, they had Pat Priest there who played Marilyn on the TV show. She was there uh, and visited. I know that they've had the, the 
the guy who played Eddie Munster has visited the place. So did Grandpa, which for the life of me. I, I started to say, if you look in the list of pictures for dining room, I don't mm-hmm. know why it's in there. But there is a picture outside of the front of the house with a bunch of people lined up, some lights strung, and there stands Grandpa Munster. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's really cool looking. Yeah, it is kind of cool. But anyway, the 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 place looks uh, it's incredible. I I think that I, I, it, it would take some planning for someone to go there and visit it. But the fact that it actually exists really just leaves my jaw dropping. Oh, that's the website, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn that off. Okay. Will they even let you leave that on there? Uh, yeah, it'll be it's so fine. short and garbled. But... Yeah. But um, I love it when you accidentally turn <laughs> things on. It's funny. <laughs> so, um, I mean, the, the the dining room looks amazing. It's it really has everything that you would see in the TV show, and it's all set in that Victorian style furniture. It's it's very uh, even that couch they used to do a lot of their scenes in is there, and the organ, and um, just they have Eddie's room and Grandpa's room and Lily's room. You can. Looking, at, you can go through each one of those rooms. So if you really want to relive the TV show and have fun, uh, contact them. You know, see when the next time or b- book a time that you can go and visit it. That's actually kind of neat if you think about it. It really is. I love it. I wonder if we get those people on the show. It might be fun to for this October, it. maybe for our little. Oh, that might thing. be worth checking. We might be able to get them to chit chat about that. Maybe, yeah. Don't hold us to that, everyone, but <laughs> that would be pretty good. Hey, if you're listening now and that's something that you would really want us to do, let us know. Give us a uh, comment in uh, the Facebook page that this is posted in or in uh, Podbean in the comments or just write us at tenderfoottourists at gmail.com. So uh, what's next on the list of things? Now, that's two of places so far. Right, and you know how it is. We can't just have a podcast and not talk about food oh heck no so we have to talk about something odd in food (laughs) um and by the way odd does not mean bad king's beer garden and restaurant right where is that located again that is in Pierland, texas that is just on the south end of houston actually it's i'm finding that okay that was no plan of our own by the way, where we decided to pick these places, it just happened to be two of them were just outside or inside the Houston area, and then one just happened to be in Dallas. Yeah, so I it mean, was it's just... like our pathway to Galveston. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Do you want me to read this little excerpt? Yeah. Because it's kind of interesting. When you wear it this way, it kind of starts putting it all together. King's Beer Garden started with a dream and a car wash. Originally, proprietor Hans Sitter opened a free bratwurst stand for customers to enjoy while getting their cars washed. Fast forward to 2015, and King's Beer Garden has ballooned into a national sensation, having been voted Best German Restaurant in America by GermanDeli.com. Oh, yeah. That was something else. Um... In addition to the authentic German cuisine, King's servers wear traditional lederhosen, and the restaurant frequently hosts live traditional German music. I want to go there. I know. Okay, so uh, this – going back to what you were saying, what you were reading there, which, by the way, is at kingsbeergarten.com. Uh, well, you can put a link because that's very difficult to spell just by sounding it out. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of this podcast. In fact, I'll make sure that there's a link to everything that we discuss in the podcast in the description. But going back to what you're saying that that it was it, it turned out to be extremely popular and it won a lot of awards. Number one, best German restaurant in America. Number two, uh, in the top 100 places in Houston to work. Uh, it also t- – number 11 in the top 12 best beer gardens in America. Uh, the list goes on of all the different types of awards. Number one, best bars in the uh, Houston suburbs. That was number one. Uh, I like this one. The most whimsical in Texas. <laughs> Onlyinyourstate.com did that That's one. my type of award. I like that stuff. So um, I, I think that uh, it, it, it really just – I really want to go there. 
You and I both love authentic German food, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we got to try it in Hot Springs. and We did, that yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was. It was a learning experience is what it was. Yeah, they did, but they didn't have the German music paint playing live. I would love to experience that. Yes, I would too. And I, I think that uh, this place would hit all the check boxes for our, our entertainment and culinary desires. And you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Um, they do all kinds of things in the community. For instance, they do the uh, King's Oktoberfest. They have one of those. Um, they have a garden party and they have uh, – I mean they just do all kinds of fun things. And uh, they also have a couple of other restaurants that they open that are related to this but different. And, I mean, they serve a ton of different kinds of foods. I mean, you heard all the reward, reward. You heard all the awards that they've gotten. It's because they're no longer just serving brats, folks. Yeah. I mean, they have giant um, beer pretzel, gourmet deviled eggs. <laughs> yeah. Um, King smoked wings. They, I mean, that's just in their sam. I'm mean, not samplers, but their appetizers. I, they've got just a crazy amount of different kinds of food: polo sausage with red potatoes, celery, and. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> <laughs> point is Vina Stitzel. They oh, it's called Bavarian potato and sausage, is what it was. Oh, we had that before. We I did actually. You did. I had it. and It was like uh, it's warm. I didn't expect it to be warm. Oh, you're talking about potato salad. What you had, did you say? You, had, you said you had German potato salad. Okay, what did you say? This is Bavarian potatoes and sausage. <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Uh, they have Hungarian goulash. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Kale jalapeno salad. You might like that if it didn't say the word kale in it. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Yeah, health health food, my butt. Okay, so <laughs> also they have the the live band. Now, if you're interested in going and hearing the live band on Fridays, uh, they have live music from 6 to 10. Saturday night, you can enjoy the band from 5 to 10. And it's a, it's just a great way to celebrate the weekend is what they say on their website. So, uh, but it doesn't say if the the band actually has a name. I think it's just uh, probably their 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 band in house band. Okay, I just read something and it made me smile a little bit. And I'm not talking about the name of a sandwich. I just saw that I'm not repeating on here, but it's really funny. It says make the worst combo ever, and it's you know like bratwurst worst. Mm-hmm. It says choose your worst, choose your bun, choose your topping. Add any side for a dollar fifty. So huh. that's kind of a neat idea. That is kind of a neat idea. They get to just build their own. But, I mean, <laughs> creative, creative, creative. I would really like to go there and see if it tastes as good as we're reading. So what do you think of the uh, – excuse me. What do you think of the uh, the the prices on the menu? Because the menu is available to you online to look at. Did you look at the menu by any you chance? Know, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at it right now, and I'm thinking it seems fair and competitive – Mm-hmm. I do think it's interesting that you go down and you have a um, list of things you can add to your worst, like apple horseradish, dollar fifty. Not bad. A fried egg, a dollar fifty. You know. Yep. Well, I was going to say the the thing is, is if you're if you're going with someone, it's like you know what? I don't want to try uh, German food. I really would rather ha- rather have something normal, you know, something I know for sure what I'm getting. You can actually get a, a regular everyday burger there. And That's- if you want to go totally the opposite direction and get something very strange that you can't get just anywhere, mm-hmm. you could get elk. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, you got something called the mountain man that has elk, venison, bison, wild boar, and antelope. I'm assuming they're sausages. So exotic meats. Or, or brats. Um, alligator. Alligator, yep. And then the, another wild boar, rabbit and rattlesnake. Mm-hmm. So you could get something very strange now, and unusual. Yeah. And something worth mentioning, by the way, is the fact that hmm. this is not just a meat fest. There are actually vegan t- options that. on the menu. Mm-hmm. And it's not just like one thing. And I'm seeing just right here three things. But I know as I've been looking for it, I've seen other things say vegan, mm-hmm. like sauces and stuff. So. Everybody gets to try something. And if you're really wanting to try a good cocktail or uh, an authentic German beer, they do have a happy hour. It's Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, their little mini bites have pretzel bites, uh, deviled eggs, Bavarian fried pickles. I mean, really, honestly, I for the fact that they are considered a, an authentic German restaurant, they still have a lot of Americanized food for someone to feel – uh, comfortable and ease your way into something a little more 
found you some bangers and mash. Oh, I love bangers and mash. That's more of a that's more of a Scottish dish, isn't it? I don't know. I think that's more <laughs> of a Scottish ditch, dish ditch. Then there's crispy crispy pork shank and Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzels. Wiener Schnitzels. You know what? I think that's good. I think that's I th- I think we gave everybody an idea of uh, the kind of things that we found and might be inspire somebody, you know what, to tell us what sort of strange, weird, or unusual or unique is even better uh, f- places to visit in your area. Let us know at tenderfoottourists at gmail.com. We'd love to hear about them. Well, and I'm not going to tell any details. This is just a plant of seed of interest in people's heads. But I have something I want you to look up if you really are intrigued by the weird. It is also in Texas. And it is the National Museum of Funeral History. Oh, yeah. Marinate on that, folks. <laughs> I, You know what? Uh, wow. Well, that this has is, been a great episode. Yeah, is, <laughs> hey, you know, we just got back from Panda Express. Uh, here, It's a local restaurant. You want to open what the What do I call cookies? it? Uh, Kung Fu Panda Express. No, just Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> it came from when they first um, opened here. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember the name of the store the place and i every time i thought about it i thought of kung fu panda i know so i finally gave in and just called kung fu panda my kids laugh at me and go oh no that's not his name i'm like yes it is yes it is and don't don't correct your mother (laughs) don't correct your mother (laughs) let's see how accurate our fortunes are let's check and see how holy mackerel i can't read mine oh i'm gonna eat this on air i know i'm not supposed to Does that annoy you? Write us at tenderfoottourists at gmail dot com. <laughs> okay, what is your say? I'll let you go I can't first. Read it. Oh my goodness, that's really. Uh, you need your glasses. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. You want me to read it for you? Mm-hmm. Hold on, I'll get out from the microphone so you can hear. Oh, this is upside down. You handed it to me upside down. That was a trick, wasn't it? How could you tell? Uh, you will find success in business and social situations. Dang right. I wonder if that means that we're going to have a donator towards the uh, towards the uh, Two Tenderfoot Tourist podcast. It probably just means I'm going to have a buttload of people to train this summer. <laughs> oh, that could happen. That could really happen. Uh, mine says your talents will be recognized and suitably rewarded. Dang! If we put those together, it has to be the podcast. It has to be. <laughs> It have to be. By the way, just real quick before we exit, you know, and we we finish this podcast. Was it not fun to have Matt on our last okay. podcast? I don't know if the people listening felt it, but I was giddy when we were done. It was the most fun time I've had on our podcast in a long time. He's just got a lot of charisma, doesn't it? Does he? the dude talk fast or what? He talks lightning fast. I liked it. It kept things moving, and we got a lot of information in. But yeah, he is a fast talker, and he said he was, and he wasn't kidding. He was, well, I, I li- I've listened to his podcast for so long. I've grown, I've grown accustomed to it. I, I mean, it just, it, you know, it's just the way that that's Matt. Well, the whole time we're interviewing him, I'm just sitting there, and my grin's getting bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. I was not only enjoying what he had to say, but I couldn't quit noticing that he talked fast, and I was grinning and giggling a little bit about it. And now, now it's for, now I can really say that. Whenever he does his podcast, I often wonder, it's like, does he script it out and write it out before? No. No, he does not. He prefers to shoot from the hip. And you know what? I do, too. You like to script a little more. It's hard. I I would rather script it because of the fact that um, it helps me keep my mind organized. I like to keep it cash, babe. I'm like a 12-gauge shotgun and just and see what sticks type of thing, you know? So um, you're not like that at all. Oh my gosh, I'm That's all over I, the place. Eh. You don't think so? You just said how much you like to have a script. That means you're not. No, if if I, that's why I uh, want to skip that script. That's why I'd like to script it. Is because of the fact if I don't, I just like I'm a scatter shot. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You're not just saying that. You're just no. I understand. Okay, all right. it makes more sense. Um. So wow, what a great episode we had today. It was a great episode. <laughs> Again, I like last one better, but that was only because Matt was so fun. We're going to have to have some more people on our podcast. I, I really know. enjoy interviewing people. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. Now that you and I have learned how to balance it a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no joke. By the way, did you see that thing on Facebook? Uh, signs you might be middle-aged. Um, 
you can't watch movies past 9 p.m. You have plastic bags filled with other plastic bags. That's and, me. And my, my all-time favorite tweezers are your best friend. Oh, dang, man. <laughs> I hit all three of those. <laughs> That's not good. Your, uh, uh, are you kids, uh, your kids use slang you don't understand. <sighs> oh, no, I know it. It's just because oh I drop gosh. a school bus, so. Anyway, so. G. G. <laughs> Number one in the hood, G. <laughs> Straight trip and boo. <laughs> <laughs> we are so oh, old. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. What is our problem? Thank you, everyone, for listening to episode number... 95. The one about one and only in Texas. Two Gender Tourists is a family-friendly podcast. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify, just to name a few, because I am scripting right now. <laughs> <laughs> to get in touch with us and chat about this podcast or even your travel experiences, simply email us at tenderfoottourist at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Keep those suggestions coming, everyone. And you may be, and maybe you'll give us our best episode of 1987-28-34. Try that again. Okay. Point two. And Captain's a half. log. <laughs> keep your <laughs> keep, <laughs> now I got tickles. Keep your suggestions coming and maybe you'll give us our best episode of 2019. I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy. <laughs> Until next time. Stay tender. <laughs> You're like, aren't you going to talk? And I'm like, uh, you're looking at me like, what? Are you missing something? I should have went, and I'm Sandy. <laughs> you would have died laughing. Oh, God. Awesome.